The king is back. My fellow titans, Code of the Mizzle is out. Juggernauts are in. How's it going guys? Tavius Place here, back with another video. Thank you so much for stopping by. On today's video, I want to go over a titan subclass tree that hasn't been used much as of late. Mostly because of stasis having such a long range effectiveness, but with the recent news of all the nerfs and buffs to subclasses, I believe this subclass tree for the titan will actually be really good again and be a good choice for many titans out there in season 15. But before we get into it, remember if you get any value out of this video, do me a favor and help me out with the like and heavy attack on that subscribe button to support my channel. Now let's get into the video. The Titan subclass tree I am referring to is Bottom Tree Striker or Code of the Juggernaut. This subclass tree was very popular in the game before Stasis was introduced, but with hunters creating ice tornadoes, warlocks launching freezing projectiles, and titans building ice walls all around them, Fist of Havoc just couldn't compete with all the Stasis. Since then, Bungie has been tuning down Stasis but still a buff was needed to make top and bottom tree striker more effective. That buff is here, let's go over it. Fist of Havoc, increase slam detonation radius by 14%, reduce slam damage falloff, reduce slam attack activation costs from 21% to 18%. Now the slam detonation radius increase means your slam will cover a larger area. They did not buff the damage, they just made it a larger area of effect and also the damage falloff will get you extra kills on enemies who are farther from you. The last change to Fist of Havoc is the slam activation cost which now will be 18% of your super instead of the usual 21%. This will allow us to fit in one or two extra slam attacks per super. Usually during your super you probably slam three or four times but with this change we're talking slamming five to six times in between light attacks. Of course with the help of your exotic helmet, I'll get into it in a second. Another big change that benefits the Code of the Juggernaut is the change to Stasis, especially the changes to the Warlock Super. Winter's Wrath Reduced Shadow Pulse damage versus close range supers. Warlocks must now freeze and shatter twice to defeat players in Fist of Havoc and other close range supers. And this was one of the main reasons why Fist of Havoc was unusable in PvP. If a Warlock sees you coming, they would freeze you from across the map and shatter you. At least now they have to do it twice using most of their super bar, so if they get you, they won't have time to get the rest of your team. Also the improvements to the rally barricade and the towering barricade add on to this subclass. The rally barricade bonuses while standing behind it will now be plus 30 to stability, plus 10% weapon range, and minus 50% weapon flinch, on top of the already faster reload speed. To prepare for this build, I'm going to be going all in on intellect at tier 9 with a cooldown of 3 minutes 52 seconds. As of the recording of this video, we now know the type of champion mods we will get in our seasonal artifact. Anti-barrier auto rifle, unstoppable linear fusion rifle and fusion rifle, also overload bows, unstoppable pulse rifle and unstoppable sidearm. The exotic armor piece I'll be using is the insurmountable skull fort an exotic helmet that has been with us since Vanilla Destiny 2. It can drop from any exotic source and sometimes Zer has it on his inventory. The exotic armor perk is Transfusion Matrix. Kills with arc melee abilities trigger health regeneration and restore melee energy. The armor mods I'll be using as of now are taking charge on my helmet to become charged with light by picking up orbs of power. Elemental Light on my chest piece to become charged with light by picking up elemental wells. On my legs I have Energy Converter. While charged with light, using your grenade attack grants you super energy, consuming all stacks of charge with light. The more stacks you have, the more energy you gain, to a maximum of 50% of your super. This mod imposes a penalty of minus 10 to your grenade stat. And for my class item, I've equipped Elemental Light to create Elemental Wells by defeating combatants with my super, which is the point of this build. I still have a little room on my armor pieces for other mods, which I will be adding as soon as Season 15 starts. So if by the time you're watching this, the season is out, look for mods that give you super energy, maybe Ashes to Assets is back or something similar, maybe Energy Accelerant or Impulse Recycler, we'll see what we get. I'll add it under my pinned comment down in the comment section when the content drops. 
For my weapons, I'm going all in with Bad Juju. Pulse Rifles haven't had any special mods on the Seasonal Artifact in a while, but this is about to change for Season 15 since we are having Unstoppable Pulse Rifle. Like I said, for my Kinetic I'll be using Bad Juju, which as we all know grants super energy on kills, also refills the magazine and increases the damage of the weapon. As a side note, if you don't have this weapon, you may use another weapon you like with Thresh or save up the resources to buy it from the kiosk at the tower. For my energy weapon, I'm using a bow, the Imperial Needle from Season of the Chosen. Reason I chose a bow is because of the Overload Champions, even though I would have liked to equip a grenade launcher or a fusion rifle, but I needed to be able to stun the annoying Overload Champions. And for my heavy weapon, I'm going to be using the Shatter Cypher, the heavy machine gun from Season of the Splicer. We know there's going to be a change to machine guns, so I'm going to give this one a try with Heating Up and Rampage. This is the build more or less that I will be starting the new Season 15 of Destiny 2 with, when it releases August 24th. My Bad Juju will grant me super energy and my intellect is a tier 9 with a cooldown of 3 minutes 52 seconds for my super. All my weapons generate also power and don't forget about Trample, the subclass perk that extends the duration of Fist of Havoc by killing enemies with it. Your Rally Barricade gives you extra buffs so don't forget to use it and throwing a grenade consumes your stacks of charge with light into super energy. Let's see if the recent subclass buffs and nerfs help Fist of Havoc be a viable option in the future sandbox. And there you have it guys, my thoughts on a subclass tree that was almost as forgotten as Nova Warp, but seems to be making a comeback. Let me know down in the comments if you will be giving this a try or if you are a Thunder Crash Titan all the way. Don't get me wrong, Thunder Crash Titan is super fun, especially with the Falling Star Exotic, but Code of the Juggernaut might be useful again with all the changes we just went over. Anyways guys, time to get out of here. Don't forget to like and heavy attack that subscribe button to help and support my channel. If you want to get in touch with me, you can follow me on Instagram and also on Twitter now, at Tavius Place. I hope you all have a great week and if you want to watch other cool builds and videos, you can click right here.